Hello guys, welcome back to another rendition of Cursed TikTok, also known as Fragrance TikTok, where I find the most interesting fragrance content on the internet. Fragrance TikTok is quite interesting because you get more sharp, short, concise fragrance videos that aren't always very serious, which is kind of nice. TikTok doesn't always take, take itself seriously. I like that you got a lot of interesting characters on there. So I always like to try and uh, stay up to date in the world of fragrance TikTok and see who's uh, making a big splash in the scene. So let's watch these seven videos together. Okay, so this first video is from the guy we reacted to before. He made Versace Eros uh, in his uh, kitchen <laughs> himself. So uh, I think now he's trying to recreate another video in his white hoodie. Guys, let me show you how to make your very own fragrance from home. JPG Labu Paradise Garden. So let's go ahead and add the first important thing, the coconut inside there. Okay, well, I'll stop right there. Just so you know, guys, uh, Lebo Paradise Garden is the newest flanker in the Lebo line by JPG. It's kind of like coconuts, uh, middle of the road between the Eau de Toilette and Le Parfum. It's kind of got that middle of the road freshness. It's got coconut, fig, sandalwood in there, it's a little bit vanillic. Uh, it's a beautiful scent, and I think he's going to uh, absolutely recreate it perfectly just looking at this video so far. I'm going to add the first important thing, the coconut inside there. So let's get a little bit of the coconut in there. Okay. Nice bit of coconut. Next, you want to go in there with a little bit of ginger. Okay, got to have your ginger. So let's add some ginger to this here. All right. I'm going to add some ginger. There we go. Ginger is inside of there now. Next, you want to go in there with your um, rubbing alcohol there. So let's go in there with a rubbing alcohol. I like that he looks like a professional lab worker, like something from Breaking Bad. <laughs> like they were making crystal meth in that show, but he's uh, he's obviously working with uh, similar great stuff here in, in his kitchen. That's why he's wearing that uh, uniform. Next up, very, very important too, to give it that nice salty smell. You know, got to put your salt in there. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of skip, skip ahead because I can kind of get the point of this. As I forgot to add this inside of there, you also want to add some fig in there. So let's add a little bit of fig inside of there. Just a tad bit of fig. All right, tad bit of fig. So I literally think he looks at a note breakdown on Fragrantica and literally just goes to the grocery store and buys all the ingredients and then uh, makes the fragrance at home, I guess. Now let's go ahead and get this stuff mixed together and see how it smells. I've right, got the JPG Paradise Garden inside of here. Let's see how it smells. Wow. Yeah, smells so good. Definitely give this stuff a try, guys. It smells just like JPG Labu Paradise Garden. Peace. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, he recreated it perfectly. I'm convinced, guys. What do you think? Here are the top five 10 out of 10 Arab fragrances. Now, this is a good video because actually I feel that I have underexplored the Middle Eastern fragrances these days. So let's learn about some new stuff together. Coming in at number five is the Tafaz Assad. For about $30, you're going to get a dumb reach everyday fragrance that is spicy, fresh, and is crowd pleasing. This will be good for any occasion. This is similar to Sauvage Elixir, but in my opinion, it smells better. It's a lot more refined with the vanilla and the pineapple instead of the grapefruit in the opening. Yeah, I like Assad. Yeah, I know it already. I think it's a great fragrance. I think it's a more fresh and easy to wear. Wear Sauvage Elixir. I don't think it's a dumb reach necessarily. I'm not sure I'd wear this in the gym, for example, but I think in uh, most scenarios, in the cooler weather, outside of the summertime, I think it's a good signature to wear. Very good for the price. Coming in at number four is Tarathi Brown. This is a dupe of Tuxedo, a very popular fragrance, but this, in my opinion, smells a little better and performs a lot better as well. There's vanilla, amber, patchouli, and guys, I'm not gassing it. This is so well blended and definitely a lot more crowd pleasing than Tuxedo. In terms of performance, I get about seven, eight hours. Interesting. I like Rochelle's Mustache Eau de Parfum. That's kind of my go-to clone for Tuxedo. I kind of think it makes Tuxedo a little bit redundant, but if Tarathi Brown is even better, a lot of people don't like the way that Mustache EDP doesn't project a lot. Maybe Tarathi Brown is better in that department. I also get about eight hours with Mustache. So maybe this is a better clone. Maybe I need to try it. Have you guys tried it? Let us know in the comments below. Coming in at number three is Honor and Glory. This is a tri- Okay, I'll stop right there. This is such an underrated scent. I got a bottle of this recently. I absolutely love it. I think he's going to say some great things about it. Let's watch together. And Glory. This is a Tribeca clone, and this is like an overdose of pineapples and vanilla. It's sweet, has this creme brulee vibe, and it's perfect for vacations or the hot weather in general. What, what did he say? A Tribeca clone? I didn't think Oud for Honor and Glory was a clone of anything. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, okay, so some people think it reminds them of Tribeca by Bond number no. 9. I'm looking at the notes of this fragrance that looks very different to Oud for Honor and Glory. And a lot of people disagree with people saying they're a clone on Fragrantica, so 
To me, it still seems like it's not really a clone. I don't know, guys. I haven't tried Tribeca in fairness. And he says it's a good warm weather scent. It's tropical. I do think it has a tropical vibe to it, but actually I think it's got a lot more going on there. I think it's a good all-rounder to wear all year long, day and night. Super versatile. I don't think it's warm weather only. Number two is where we start getting into some of the best high quality Arab fragrances. Neroli Canvas, this is a dupe of Neroli Portofino. This is blended beautifully. It's aromatic and citrusy. It has bergamot, lemon, Neroli musk. It lasts for such a long time and is perfect for the spring and summer. That sounds really good because Neroli Portofino, I love the scent, but I always say that it's overpriced for the performance you're getting, but I use really high quality Neroli in there. If the clone here, Neroli Canvas, has a similar quality Neroli and lasts longer, that could be a very good dupe to go for. And finally, at number one is La Yucuan Perome, one of the best quality dupes there is. This is a dupe of Tuscan leather. This stuff is amazing. It's sweet raspberries mixed with leather and woods. It's super long lasting. It's sexy and a very masculine scent. I agree with that. It's a very good clone. La Yucuan, I think, is a better priced version of Tuscan leather and it performs better from my experience. It's louder. It's a beastly clone. I don't think every man needs Jean-Paul Gaultier Elixir, the Mal Elixir, because I think it's a simplistic but very pleasant vanilla scent. I think if you want a sexy, fun clubbing scent, you're on that kind of vibe, you're more of a younger guy, you're going to enjoy the Mal Elixir. And, uh, but yeah, I generally think if you're, let's say, a more mature guy, you like more complex scents, it might not be for you. So not every man needs it, but I can see why on TikTok someone would say that is the kind of crowd that would have it. So Tobacco Vanille is a great scent, definitely worth trying and experiencing so you know the scent profile. But actually, Al Haramain's Amber Oud Tobacco Edition is such an accurate clone that both me and Sam Maser were struggling to tell the difference between it, you know, when we did that video with him, with the clone fragrances. I really do think it kind of makes Tobacco Vanille redundant. I'd say just go for that instead. I think the Mancera atomizers are okay. I'm not sure about 10 out of 10. That's a perfect score. I think there are still brands that have better atomizers. But anyways, <laughs> besides the point, Red Tobacco is nice. It's solid. It's a beastly fragrance, of course. Spicy, ashy, smoky tobacco that has some oud in there, some vanilla as well. I think it becomes a little bit nicer on the dry down. It becomes a, it's a bit... Um, a bit polarizing on the opening and it lasts such a long time. When I had a sample that it was like 24 hours, I actually think Red Tobacco Intense is better. It's smoother, higher quality ingredients that only last 12 hours, so it's not as, uh, you know, so crazy with the performance. I actually think you should go for that flanker instead. Since summer's coming up, here are the five best summer fragrances in my whole collection. At number five, I'm gonna go with Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense. This is an amazing citrusy, musky fragrance. It's very masculine, mass appealing. This smells like the beach. It smells like a summer day. This is perfect. It does not smell like rotten eggs, like some people say. It does smell like rotten eggs, actually, like some people say. You can't say that because actually, you know, I don't get that effect, but some people do get that on their skin. Skin chemistry is very unique to each individual, and it's not a an uncommon thing to hear that uh, aquatics react to people's skin differently. Some people do get a rotten egg effect from the aquatic uh, raw materials that perfumers use. So I think it really depends on you. You know, don't think about light blue oil intense. I love it. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time, but definitely try it on your skin first and be aware of that rotten egg smell. At number four, I'm going with Lebeau EDT. Very fresh, coconut, sweet, a little bit of vanilla. This is absolutely amazing for a hot day. Um, I wouldn't really rock this at the night too much during the night, but for a great day, hot day on the beach, whatever, this is great. Out of the entire Lebeau line, I would say the EDT is probably my least favorite. I don't think it's a bad scent. I'd probably give it like a seven out of 10. It's versatile, but it's a very simplistic scent. It's like a creamy coconut mixed with tonka bean. So it's more of a tonka bean scent. I always kind of refer to it as the poor man's <laughs> Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. It's a less interesting version of that, let's say. I think the other Lebeau flankers made the line more interesting. It actually uh, piqued my interest more. The Eau de Toilette is not bad. I think it's a good scent all year round. It's not just warm weather, in my opinion. It's just quite a clean, simple, uh, almost skin lotion, coconut-like fragrance overall. At number three, I'm going to go with Rosasi Hawass Ice. This one is not talked about as much. 
It is um, very similar to Rasasi Hawass, the original, but it, it's not necessarily as sweet. It adds some mint and some greens in there. It's got sort of an icy feel. This is great for the summer, and it's more unique, in my opinion, than the original Hawass. In my opinion, Hawass Ice is not that different from the original at all, and I don't think the ice name really makes any difference. I don't think it has any ice-like effect to it. I think it's literally the original smoothed out, made a little bit more powdery with the cinnamon there, a little bit less synthetic and still good performing around eight to 10 hours. I kind of think it is the slightly smoothed out version of the original fragrance. Minimal difference. I say you don't need to own both, but if you're gonna run out of the original, you can go for Hawass Ice instead. It was a bit of a disappointing release in my opinion, it's not too different. At number two, I'm gonna go with Labola Parfum. This one would be higher, except it's very sweet. So you can only, you really should only get away with this during summer nights, but it's very tropical, so you know, it does work, but it's very sweet and dense, but it smells so good. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I was going to say as well, like, yeah, it's a summer fragrance only for the nighttime. It's versatile otherwise outside of that, but it's only for summer nights. It has a thickness, a sweetness to it. It has some syntheticness to it as well. So to me, Lobolo Parfum isn't a perfect fragrance. It's probably a 9 out of 10 is what the rating I would give it nowadays. And number one, the new Lobo Paradise Garden. This stuff is absolutely incredible. It has the original DNA of the original Lobo plus the added mint and greens, and that is what does it for me. The added mint and greens just make it more of an overall great, fresh summer fragrance. Yeah, I've actually done one spray of it recently, and it smells nice. It smells like a middle of the road, you know, in between uh, the thickness, let's say, of the Eau de Toilette and the Le Parfum. I think it's a nice scent. I think the scent profile is really good. It doesn't seem like it has the best performance, though. It's probably going to be an average performer, so I'll give a full review soon. But yeah, it seems like it's going to be a solid pick. Uh, for this warm weather season. I'm not sure if you need to have it if you own any of the other flank rooms already. What will be the number one summer fragrance you guys are looking forward to wearing? Let us know in the comments down below. Try to avoid saying the same thing as me, fragrance edition. I'm going to ask you guys five questions, and if at any point you say the same answer as me, you're out. Okay, I thought this was a, a strange concept, but then I kind of started playing along. So for transparency, for honesty, uh, the first question I already answered in my own head. Let's see, you know, let's see, let's see what you guys say. Play along with this game. Question number one, name a popular designer fragrance for the winter. Give you guys five seconds. Five, four, three, two. If your answer was Spice Bomb Extreme, grab some salt because you're cooked. You're out. So yeah, I said Spice Bomb Extreme and I was like, damn, he got me. <laughs> what did you guys say? Be honest with us. Did you also say Spice Bomb Extreme? So I'm already out from the point one of this game, but I haven't actually seen the rest of the video, so we're going to watch it together now and uh, let's just cheat and carry on playing. Question number two, name a popular designer fragrance for the summer. I'm gonna say Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue O oh, Intense. Let's see the answer. Give you guys five seconds. Five, four, three, two. If your answer was Jean-Paul Gaultier Labo, you're cooked, buddy. You're out. Ah, I didn't get caught out there, but what did you guys say? Did you get caught out again? Question number three, name an overrated TikTok fragrance. Ooh, I naturally want to say Baccarat Rouge 540. I think that's going to be the answer here. Give you guys five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. If your answer was Jean-Paul Gaultier, Lamar Elixir, TLA to Alligator, you're done. Okay, this game isn't getting me as much anymore. Uh, I think the Jean-Paul Gaultier hype is going crazy on TikTok right now. So people are, are just constantly talking about the Lamau fragrances. I think just the marketing of the bottle shape just works really well on TikTok. I don't know why, but uh, people seem to love JPG right now. It's just going off the charts. But there was a point in time where people would not stop talking about Baccarat Rouge and it's one million clones it has out there. So, you know, it depends when you watch these kind of videos, you know, what is getting the most hype at certain different points in time. On TikTok, things can go viral really quickly and come in and out of style or out of trends. Question number four, name a cheap fragrance for the summer. Give you guys five seconds. I would say it's going to be Nautica Voyage is naturally the first. I was actually, no, Mont Blanc Legend Spirit came to my mind first, but then for TikTok, I think it's going to be Nautica Voyage, isn't it? Three, two, one. You said Rosace Was. Pack your bags. You're out of here. Uh, I'm disappointed by that one because house isn't cheap in every single country. It's not as uh, readily cheap as it used to be because of the hype it's gone over the years. So I don't know. Is it cheap for everyone? I don't think so. And last question, name a fragrance under $30. Again, I would say maybe Afna 9 p.m. or Nautica Voyage again. Two, one. If your answer was Nautica Voyage, you were this close. 
but you're gone. If you made it to the end, congrats. Okay, so Voyage, I think, could have been number four or five, but there we go. What did you guys think? Kind of a fun game. Here are the top five most embarrassing colognes you could possibly wear. If you wear any of these, I'm getting embarrassed for you. You're done for. It's over for you. Number one is the one million bottle, but it has to be the small bottle. This is just like a tiny bottle. It's so embarrassing though, and it's just like... It. Look at it. In fairness, he does make a good point. Number two is any JPG because the explanation is not really needed in this one. It's just a JPG bottle. If someone sees this, man, you're cooked. It's over for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so don't show it to anyone. Keep it a secret, guys. <laughs> but, you know, the bottles, they're kind of cool. As I said, the, the marketing is working for them and people can see that as inspiration to get that kind of physique themselves. Personally, I wake up, I look at my Jean Paul Gaultier collection, and I go, yeah, do sit-ups, bro. It's a role model for young guys all over the world. Number three is spending anything over $300 on a cologne. Uh, I don't know why you would ever do this. You could have invested that money. You could have spent it on a car. Your financial decision-making is not very good. Clearly, uh, you need to rethink your life decisions. I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong, is he really? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I definitely spent over $300 on uh, Rogers Burlington 1819. I think that was my most recent purchase in that kind of price range. I don't regret it. Number four is Herba Pura. Uh, if you wear this, you're zesty. Yeah, I've heard. I, I still haven't tried Herba Pura. I really need to. Maybe I have tried it in store once, but I need to try it properly. I think a lot of people say it's unisex, but it leans quite feminine and it's quite popular on TikTok, I think, as well. Honor will mention Versace blue jeans because who are you trying to impress smelling that good? It's just kind of weird, kind of odd. Just wear it for yourself, little bro. Really, that's a lot of positivity and good comments for blue jeans. It's a nice phrase, but let's relax here, all right? And number five, finally, is uh, Creed Aventus because you were just trying way too hard. And you probably also come into Aqualung collection on my video. Stop it. Knock it off. Yeah, Creed Aventus in this day and age is a little bit embarrassing. I can't, I can't deny it. Uh, you know, you get one of the clones or at least get Aventus absolute. That's the better flanker, in my opinion. Never wear these fragrances if you're going out with a woman. First one is Latafa Hamra. This has to be one of the most hated fragrances by women in 2023. Last week I was going out on a date and the girl counseled on me on the last minute. It's probably because she came across one of my videos and she saw that I had this one in my collection. It's gotta be the fragrance. I think he's probably correct. She probably saw the video and was like, no, that's for Hamra. She's like, no way. And um, I actually, I like, I say this fragrance is a little bit overrated, you know, you know, I kind of think it's like a kind of clone of Angel's Share by Killian. By Latifa, it's not a bad fragrance, but I think it's overrated. Even the Ahua flanker, I don't like it that much either. I think they're both a little bit overrated. So yeah, I believe her story. She probably knew about that fragrance. This one is Azaro, the most wanted EDP. I was wearing this one on a date once, and I asked the girl to pay for the bill because I obviously was saving money for my next niche fragrance. She ended up getting mad and never talked to me again since. So it's obviously because she didn't like this one. That yeah, I believe that. That's probably true. Like, haters gonna hate. They don't understand that niche is expensive and there's always so many fire releases coming out. Um, so I don't blame him for what he did. He's probably right. I think it was probably the most wanted. Uh, it scared her away. He smelled too good. And uh, it's just, it was just too powerful, maybe. It was just too sexy of a fragrance. Last one is stronger with you intensely. Now, whatever you do, please stay away from this one right here. I was walking down the Eiffel Tower on a date last time wearing this one. And one random guy who sells flowers came up to me and asked me if I want to buy some. Now, I didn't have any change on me. So I asked the girl if she can pay for the flowers. She ended up being so nice and said yes. So I went home with the bouquet and I think these will look so good on my desk. Anyways, I have no idea why she ended up blocking me after the date. It's probably because she didn't like this fragrance right here. So stay away from this one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I think he's probably right. I think it was probably the fragrance that um, caused her to block him. Uh, but you know what? He now has a nice bouquet of flowers, so who is the real winner here? And that concludes today's rendition of Cursed Fragrance TikTok. I think today has been a uh, relatively educational uh, episode. What do you guys think? What do you think of the clips shown here today? Uh, do you have any thoughts, uh, comments, concerns? <laughs> Let us know down below, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous reacting to TikTok video up here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.